Welcome to a bonus episode of Character Creation Cast, everyone. I'm thoroughly pleased to be able to bring another Spotlight episode to all of you both this week and next week. First up this week, we'll be sitting down with Bree Sheldon to talk about their game, Turn. But before we get into that, a few standard announcements as usual. First up, I just wanted to thank everyone who helped playtest my game, Chimera, at a Catacon this year. It went over so, so well. I'm especially glad that Richard Crates Landry, Dan Chogler, and Paladin Caleb could all play it again this year after having been my very first playtesters at a Catacon in 2017. And speaking of playtests, if you are going to be in the Milwaukee area in January, on January 12th, I'll be at Midwinter Gaming Convention at the Hilton Downtown City Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm only planning to be there for one day only, but I do have two playtests planned for that day. So check out the show notes for more information on that, and to sign up if you're interested in playing my game with me at the helm. Next, I wanted to invite all of you to join us on our Discord server, where we talk about all sorts of things from character creation to our own personal projects, to whatever you want to talk about. You can find us at discord.charactercreationcast.com. And lastly, we are still out of reviews. If you could, please head on over to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or our Facebook page to leave us a recommendation or review so we can both feel amazing, but also so others can more easily find our podcast. Plus, we love reading your amazing words on the air here. It's first come, first serve to which reviews we get to read next, so don't delay. And with all of that out of the way, on to the show. Enjoy. Welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we'll be shining a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm your host, Ryan, and today we are welcoming Bree Sheldon to talk about Turn, a slice-of-life supernatural role-playing game created by Bree, set in the modern era. Welcome to Character Creation Spotlight, Bree. It's really great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Bree, could you start us off and tell us a bit about yourself and the projects that you are currently involved in? So, my name is Bree. Um, I also go by Bo. Uh, and my pronouns are either they, them, or he, him. And um, currently, I work on turn the most, a bit, I guess. <laughs> uh, but I also run Thoughty Blog, which is a site where I do interviews and game theory and design work as well as doing some freelance work, like I'm a stretch goal for Oren, which just finished up on Kickstarter mm. as well. And um, a whole bunch of my own little things that I'm working on. Uh, but Turn has kind of taken up a lot of the time in my day, I got to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that crowdfunding is uh, is definitely a time sink from what I hear. Yeah, yeah it de- definitely is. Well, thank you for taking time away to be here with us. And uh, normally, Amelia would be here to help, but life is quite busy for the both of us at different times lately, so uh, that means that we'll just have me here today with our guest. And since this is an abridged version of our normal format, we'll just be sticking to the highlights of the system with a special focus on character creation. So without further ado, how about we find out what this game is all about? What's in a game? Awesome. Yeah. So... Turn is, uh, as you said, a slice of life supernatural game set in the modern era, Mm -hmm. and it is about shapeshifters in small rural towns. Okay. So basically, in in the game, uh, the setting is modern America from 1995 to present. Okay. Um, And we're, with the stretch goals, expanding into Italy and Germany and uh, the UK and a couple of other places. Oh, very nice. And hopefully... Will continue to grow as time goes on. 
but it's it's set in these small rural towns, uh, many of which are what we all know small rural towns to be, which are struggling a little bit and dealing with, you know, life as it comes a bit. Yeah. Um, and you play shapeshifters who have um, superpowers. That's cool. And also have to keep their identity a secret. That or makes not. sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. So it's basically like uh, almost uh, an urban fantasy. There's this sort of like supernatural side to real life, effectively. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And in turn, like it's it's got a lot of the same kind of feel, but it's a much quieter drama okay. than most uh, like urban supernatural stuff. Yeah. Um, and it also. Uh, one of the things that that tends to be very different is there's like no other magic in the world. Okay. Um, the only thing that is kind of magical at all, if you choose to have it be magic, because you can set set up that information on your own, mm-hmm. uh, is the shapeshifters oh, cool. themselves. So it's a it's a very low magic, but feels magic setting mm-hmm. because of the way the, the shapeshifters work. That's really cool. Uh, so a, more of a relaxed game, I'm assuming. That's what it's intended to be. There is stress, yeah. but um, there's not as much constant crisis as there can be in a lot of like intense, like the like, urban shadows type, you yeah. know, really big stressful games. Yeah, that makes sense. Very cool. Uh, so what sort of things do we need to play this game? Um, so really all you need is means to take notes, um, D6s, uh, so six-sided dice, mm-hmm. and... Um, something to record your character sheet on like we have character sheets that you can use printed out face to face if you're playing face to face um but we've also used like google docs and stuff oh there you go just to monitor that and then a way to mark down the town which is a huge part of creation of game and character creation oh nice and that's just a sheet of paper or like a drawings app or something like that where you can draw them the map of the town which is a map of identity not of geography oh very cool yeah, that, I like that. I, I, I believe uh, Descent into Midnight has a mechanic kind of like that for creating the world that you're going to be playing in, creating your home, and uh, a few cool. other games. And I, I really love having that sort of uh, f- like visual representation of your your environment, what you and your characters care about. Yeah, and that was really important to me. Town building was actually the first mechanic that was like, stamped done for me yeah. um during the design process and um i've play tested it probably a billion times on my <laughs> own but we've also built a whole bunch of uh a bunch of them if you can't like make the time to build a town on your own as part of your play we do have a one shot collection that's on the kickstarter in the first update um that has some sample towns to play with oh nice that's very cool uh so what do characters do in this game um, mostly they just live their lives, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of an interesting yeah. way to play, I suppose. Um, but it is very slice of life. It's, it's very much everybody is doing their day to day thing, dealing with their normal stuff that they have to worry about. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have characters that are doing things like, you know, just trying to take care of an elderly family member mm-hmm. by like, you know, making sure they work. Yeah. And stuff like that. Or someone is campaigning for mayor um, mm. in one of the games. And then also just dealing with the everyday town crises that come along. Like, you know, the Founders Day Festival, how we have to plan it and make sure that it's perfect. Mm-hmm. And all this stuff. Uh, and all the while dealing with everyday stressors like, you know, the phone call from your family member who wants to know why you haven't visited yet. Yeah. Um, and... Trying to like buy what you need from the grocery store while you're, you know, inside of you secretly is a cougar. Mm-hmm. They would really like to not be here. <laughs> um, and also the animal side of it. Yeah. Uh, whenever you play, there is a plenty of time as as beasts as well, and in that you literally are living a, a beast's life. Oh, nice. And um, you have to hunt, and you have to, you know, find shelter, and you know, deal with like pack politics for you know groups that have animal groups and stuff like that so nice it's it's really i i absolutely love it because it's it's so much quieter than so many games but it still can be very like 
engaging, yeah. I guess. Like, I'm always super into whenever we play. Like, I'm, I'm literally playing two separate campaigns and have, like, two that I'm running at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, I'm still like, can we play another one? Because... <laughs> if only there was enough time in the week. <laughs> right? <laughs> I <know>. Right. <laughs> I understand that completely. Um, well, what would you say then is uh, – a- We've we've got a lot of unique things that that we've already went over, but what what would you say is uh, probably the most unique uh, aspect of turn? Oh, that's a. I guess I guess it would be probably um, a bit how the struggles work um, and and how actions work. Okay. In the game, um, whenever you take action in turn, uh, you succeed at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, You may take a little time to accomplish your task, um, and it will have consequences, but you do what you say you're going to do. Oh, nice. And there are not a lot of games that approach it like that. Um, In particular, the way the struggles work in turn, they're like kind of the fictional resolution kind of thing that you roll against. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever you roll against them, you determine your consequences. Oh. So that's the point of the roll, not to see whether you succeed or fail. It's, oh, I like that. It's it's really nice. And it, it, it makes people approach the game a little differently when, like, they can do whatever they want. But, oh, that is a big list of consequences that I can potentially run into. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> so the more wild the action, does it have, like, more consequences attached to it? or Not really. Um, It's basically... A, a standard, so I use a 2d6 plus one die if you take a stress to do your roll. Mm-hmm. And that's like basically you activate kind of the other side of your identity to, oh, okay. like, if you're in beast form, you activate your human side yeah. and get that bonus die. And it's basically like a, a standard six minus seven to nine, ten plus okay. kind of scale, but you roll against your. Uh, stats basically um, on your opposing side. So oh. you have stats for each side. There's like a four four point four item stat list. Okay. Um, for your human sheet and your beast sheet. Okay. And whenever you're in one form and you roll against a struggle, this is when you're struggling with your opposing side, and this is normally when you do the more ridiculous things. Oh, fun. Um, <laughs> it's when they aren't exactly aligned. Yeah. Um. And uh, you you subtract basically you like put as a penalty the uh, stat from your opposing side mm-hmm. uh, at the time, and um, it basically like creates this really nice tension between the sides of your identity, mm-hmm. like because like maybe the beast really like wants to hunt that rabbit, and the humans like, uh, but look at its cute fluffy tail. Right, I don't really <laughs> want to do this. Um, and so it's a, it's a nice, like, moment of, of, of conflict, but it's inside you yeah. the whole time. I really like that. That's really cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So what are the types of characters then that people can make in this game? So there are a variety of archetypes, um, for the, uh, for the, the, uh, the characters that you can play. Mm-hmm. And so I have, uh, basically like, the the different ones that there are, they're human roles and beast archetypes. Mm-hmm. So there's like two different kinds that you can you can be. Oh, nice! Like you can mix them together to make into something different. Nice. Every player has a human character sheet and a beast character sheet, mm-hmm. and as you advance, you can sometimes get more than one beast character sheet. Oh, wow! But your human identity always remains the one. Okay. And uh. The human roles are the Beastborn, the Heir, the Late Bloomer, the Lover, the Organizer, the Overachiever, and the Show-Off. Okay. And the Beasts are a Bear, a Bison, a Cougar, an Otter, a Raccoon, a Raven, a Snake, and a Wolf. Nice. And um, whenever you start at character creation... um, you can have multiple diff- multiple people playing the same type of beast. Okay. Um, you can't have multiple people play the same type of human. Okay. Um, unless it's like later into the game and somebody cycles out and is replaced. Um, that makes sense. Through, through the process. And uh, the combinations of these, like 
Like a raccoon show off is like kind of the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> but we've had cougar late bloomers and we've had uh, raven beastborns mm-hmm. and all of them interact with each other a little bit differently and create different tones of character and different priorities. Um, and th- they all have their own literal actual goals that you achieve to advance in game. Right. And um, those change the the tonal approach of the character to a given situation a lot of the time. Oh, nice. That's very cool. Uh, it it seems uh, a little evocative of uh, uh, Powered by the Apocalypse influence. Um, so, kind of? Kind of. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it... It's it's like a because I know powered by the apocalypse they have the unique playbooks um, that you can only have one of the playbooks in play mm-hmm. at a time um, at least to start off with and then um, you've got the the mixed successes um, yeah and and all that sort of stuff but um, I I really like the 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 unique like feel of what you're describing about the system it's really cool. Thank you. It's actually destructive design of um, a couple of different bits of different Apocalypse, like Powered by the Apocalypse games, Mm -hmm. and a bunch of my own design. Um, Like the playbooks, like people call them playbooks, but to me, they're just character sheets. Yes. Um, Those I didn't do based on Apocalypse World, weirdly enough, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I did totally borrow the, you know, seven to nine scale because it's convenient. It is. But I don't have the same success rate mm-hmm. because of the way that you have to add things together and the option for the turn die. Yeah. Um. So it's a little different, but it's got the it's got the feel there. Yeah. It, it seems like if you're coming from a powered by the apocalypse background, it should be pretty easy to to grasp uh, the concepts of, of this sort of game, which is really cool. Yeah. My biggest suggestion is to not try to play it like a Powered by the Apocalypse no. game. Yeah, that that does sound... Because <laughs> <laughs> the tone does not mix, <laughs> no. like, really at all. And it's gone kind of, like, uh, really awkward really fast with people playing it like a Powered by the Apocalypse uh-huh. game. So, yeah. I can understand Definitely it. has some of the roots there, um, but uh, it's totally very different. And the the, the character sheets are... I really, I really like them. The ones that uh, my layout artist and husband John W. Sheldon did mm-hmm. um, actually connect together. Um, oh. Whenever you uh, put a slit in the sides, they just come together as like one piece. That's awesome. It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so briefly, can we go over the steps that the player has to take to create characters in this game? Yes, sure. So one thing is, uh, even in the beta right now, we have a first session step-by-step that takes you through the whole process. Mm -hmm. Um, And the first thing you do is you talk about script change. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that's essential, actually, to, like, character creation because script change can be used in any part of game uh, for turn. That's a pretty clear rule that I have for it. And that includes, like, mechanical consequences. If it's going to ruin the game for you, you can rewind that. And whenever you're creating characters, if somebody wants to include something in a backstory mm-hmm. or something like that, you can be like, hey, rewind. I don't really don't want to have that in the game. Right. Um, and this isn't to stifle anyone's creativity. Mm-hmm. It really is to make sure that we have a safe environment yes. and pushes us to do things maybe that are different than what we would default to. Yeah. Um, I think we covered script change on our safety episode of Character Evolution Cast uh, not too long ago. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, we are definitely proponents of safety at the table here at Character Creation Cast. Um, so I, I really love seeing developers include that in the base game, saying, hey, this isn't an option. Yeah. Be, be safe. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and I, I, I think that that's, like, essential whenever you're creating a game. Like, creating characters, there's, like, so much opportunity for people to be like, and here's this, like, you know kind of scary thing in my background yeah and sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's not so Mm -hmm. um that's the first part is making sure everybody's familiar with that so that as you're building people can be like hey you know let's let's like fast forward Mm -hmm. um and you can even use it for pacing like if people are like waffling for a really long time Mm -hmm. um we've been like hey let's fast forward to the next part and come back to that later or something Mm -hmm. like that it works really well 
Cool. But then, uh, after some like brief like discussion about the it, the uh, the way the mechanics work, you will get to look at the sheets and uh, the 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 like. The biggest part is that we do town building first. Yes. And town building is a step by step process, basically, mm-hmm. um, where you add elements to a map of the town and it's a map of the identity of the town. So it has themes and then the bloodlines in the town and then locations and events. And they're all kind of paced out in how relevant they are to the town and what they mean. Okay. And it, it's a really important part of the process because all of your characters come from these bloodlines Mm -hmm. um, that you establish and it can help you kind of establish your place in the town. Like who, who are you? And like, what do you, what matters to you? Uh, What themes are you related to? Like wealth or poverty or, you know, legacy and stuff like that. Oh, very cool. So um, you do the town building and then everyone uh, gets to uh, read the character sheet descriptions. Like we take turns reading it around the table Mm -hmm. and you do the human side first and you do basically the, you choose your human role first Mm -hmm. and fill out some of the basic information. Okay. Which is like basically their name, their pronouns, and uh, you choose your bloodline. Okay. And then you will, after that, uh, swap over and look at the beast archetypes. Mm-hmm. And everybody reads like the little descriptors for them. And then you choose your beast archetype. Okay. And after you've done that, then you fill out um, like the secondary powers for the beasts that you get to choose. And the uh, questions that you do for the human roles, which are about your identity and your background. Okay. Um, and some of these are unique to the specific role. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are the same for everyone. Okay. That makes sense. And, and uh, then you do um, the one stat adjustment that you get to do. Mm-hmm. And it's very small. <laughs> <laughs> it's add one, add one point to one thing. Um <laughs> And then uh, after that, you do relationships, okay. uh, which are the um, NPC relationships and PC relationships that you have. And the PC relationships are mostly narrative and to connect you and like yeah. give you identification with each other mm-hmm. um, because you all know each other at the start. Yeah. Um, and then the NPC relationships relate to your exposure tracks, which is how much someone knows that you are a shifter basically interesting um it's very exciting (laughs) it can get really intense um that's the only part of the game that ever to me feels like really like stressful yeah um and like panicky kind of is the the fact that if your exposure tracks get near the max that means that person's gonna be known like really soon yeah that you are a shapeshifter Ooh. and the reaction like that's resolved with a like a dice roll combined with your accumulated positive and negative exposure because exposures can be good or bad yeah maybe they're happy that you lifted that car off of them whenever you were being beastie <laughs> uh maybe they're really mad that you bared your teeth at them in public yeah you know you never know uh so those things add up and um that's what the relationships are for is to give you NPCs who can find out who you are both in positive and negative ways. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, the, the NPC building is always really fun because mm-hmm. people get to like, it, it gives the, the players a direct connection to the people in the town yeah. and uh, they get to like name the people and give them like kind of a description of who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, the GM will, uh, as the town manager is what we call them, they get to add secrets to them Ooh. to, cause everyone has a secret. In yeah. There. So that's, so. that's something only known to the, the town manager, the GM of the game. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. They, they get to have everyone's secrets and, <laughs> uh, every time a new character comes up, like any new NPC, they immediately like create a secret for them oh, cool. is, um, how, the, how it works. And that's like... It's created some really fun, like, behaviors and stuff like that mm-hmm. by NPCs. Like, whenever they have some sort of motivation, it makes a total big difference. Oh, yeah. yeah I love that that they're fleshed out uh, more than just flat NPCs that you'll encounter along the way. I love that. Yeah. The uh, the NPCs created by the players get whatever the, cr- the players create. And then um, the GM town manager role, like, 
the town manager can create some of the additional stuff, but they always create a secret. Yeah. Um, and for any created just by the town manager, they'll include um, like a fear and a desire mm-hmm. and something everybody knows Ooh. about them. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. It was a, I love creating NPCs. Yeah. I'm such a sucker for it. <laughs> so that's, that's why you get to create NPCs as part of character building yeah. is because I love creating NPCs. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's actually the the most of the process. Like, nice. um, it's a really actually simple concept yeah. of things. There's just a couple of fiddly steps and lots of answering questions. Yeah, uh, I I'm a sucker for uh, answering questions to flesh out the world and and your characters during character creation. So this sounds totally up my alley. Speaking of the world, yes, uh, part of building the game and the and the town building and everything is the discovering turn questionnaire. Mm-hmm. Which you ask when you start play. Mm. Um, There's a series of questions about how shapeshifters work and everything. And then you also, whenever someone uh, changes form for the first time, and whenever someone is risk exposure for the first time, you answer these questions. And those can influence people's play a lot. Like how it feels when you turn is one of the questions that you answer. And like why people can't leave town is also a part of that. Um, because that's a that's a part of the rule is you can't really leave town for extended periods of time yeah. uh, as shapeshifters. Oh, very cool. And yeah, it's we've had some really fun answers to that question. Yeah. I, I love the player agency that you've included in this. It's very cool. Player agency is like really like super important for me. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually the there's a a big history in shapeshifter lore that whenever like they turn, they like lose control. Mm-hmm. Um, and while if you get stressed out, like you max out your stress, you can be like your body can be forced to turn mm-hmm. into the other form. Mm-hmm. Um, and that happens both into human form and into beast form. Cool. Um, when that happens, you don't lose control. Mm-hmm. Um, you always have like full agency and you can you're the only one who can give consent for certain things in the game. Right. Um, because I think that losing control abdicates of, of our responsibility Mm -hmm. and it also violates our consent yes so i have a like strict rule that no you decide what you do Mm -hmm. you make that choice and it extends all the way into violence like in the violence in the game you define what happens uh in like most situations you get full authority on what happens there oh very nice so yeah i love it awesome um so then, is there anything else interesting from the Kickstarter you'd like to highlight? Um, especially things related to character creation, but it doesn't have to. Oh, let's see. So, uh, something important related to character creation is all of our stretch goals are going to come along with new or um, adjusted roles and archetypes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that will mean more beast options, more human options mm-hmm. to play with. Um in the the stretch goals that we have right now, we have uh, one for a Mormon community mm-hmm. by Anders Smith. And um, so that's going to explore uh, like a desert town okay, uh, uh, with a Mormon community, but kind of exploring different types of characters that you'd play in a situation like that. Because like Mormon culture is very different. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the... Um, in the Italian collection that we have that we're working on for Italian towns, there will also be more roles and archetypes. Mm-hmm. And um, they're going to be approaching it from a social isolation uh, perspective rather than a physical isolation, like geographical isolation right. um, for the towns. So that will change maybe some of the goals and priorities mm-hmm. of the characters and stuff in character creation. Oh, cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we can make, you know, the the other groups you know mix with ours um and we, we even actually we have uh we have someone doing german towns that's garrett uh garrett running house mm-hmm. i always say his name <laughs> wrong um and jay foster doing the uk okay. with a small seaside town nice. um and mcgay baker Ooh. has uh yeah <laughs> speaking of apocalypse well, world yeah. <laughs> uh mcgay has signed on and has some really cool ideas for uh, some of the characters that, um, like, for the character sheets that she wants to create. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm really excited to see those. Yeah. Because uh, it was important to me that that was part of the expansion 
whenever we do new towns because like all the different towns are going to be different. Yeah. And so like it's not just going to be like here you get a, a new town, but you get a town and the people in it mm-hmm. to play. Um, and so a- as far as character creation goes, there's going to be a lot more options nice. uh, if we fund all of our stretch goals. Excellent. I really like that. So get on it, people. <laughs> <laughs> No, I am super excited for this game, um, and I, I will include the link to the Kickstarter in our show notes, so if anybody wants to check it out, uh, just go to our show notes and go and follow that link. Um, and when does the Kickstarter end? The Kickstarter ends November 30th. 2018, if you're listening in the future. <laughs> yes. yes, November 30th, 2018. Um, and we have, we still have some of the, uh, custom town levels where I work with you, um, as a backer to make us custom town for you Ooh. available. Um, and, uh, there's our bison level, which is if you buy that level of the backer, like if you back it that level, it also gets a copy for a marginalized member of the community, Ooh. um, that I'll be, uh, identifying people and giving out after the Kickstarter and publishing is done. Oh, that's very nice. Um. Uh, so those are really important to me, especially the community copy as the bison. Like I really wanted to give the opportunity for people who couldn't afford my game to get a copy of it. Yeah. And um, people have really embraced it. And that makes me very happy. I love that. That's very cool. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me to talk about Turnbury. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited. Yeah. Could you remind everyone uh, the things that you're working on and where they can find you online? Sure. Um, so I work um, primarily out of breecs.com. Mm-hmm. That's B-R-I-E-C-S dot com. That is Thoughty, where I do interviews, uh, game design talk, and game design. And um, where I recently have posted some articles about turn mm-hmm. that people might find interesting as well. Nice. And I'm doing a stretch goal for Oren, uh, where I'm doing an antagonistic world. Um, very excited about cool. that. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Thoughty Games. Okay. And I'm also on G Plus, even though it's going to die, <laughs> uh, as Bree Sheldon. And um, I'm on Mastodon under Dice Camp as Bree CS. Okay. So, um, I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. I'm pretty prolific, <laughs> and I'm I'm always working on a bunch of stuff. But uh, right now, turn is um. Turn has been taking up a lot of my time, so I'm hoping that um, I can actually work on design on it again mm-hmm. soon, because that, that, that's, like, the really fun part. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, as, as I promised on another podcast, if we reach the, if we, if we get lucky enough to hit 20,000 in the next, like, 14 days mm-hmm. on the Kickstarter, I have a special, uh, a special goal that I made of my own for the Kickstarter mm-hmm. that I would like to release very nice. so and it's my own game design so I, i'm hoping that like people will you know check it out and enjoy it yeah 100 percent. this sounds like a really unique system and uh a, a system where you can create some really unique people so um definitely check it out people thank you so much yeah. well and thank you so much for joining me for this special bonus episode of character creation spotlight and thanks everyone that's listening for tuning in Character Creation Spotlight, like Character Creation Cast, is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even find some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. 
So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role playing games. Except the games are terrible and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which Silver Hawk was the best. It was Hot Wing, don't even add us. Find their shows at systemmasterypodcast.com or oneshotpodcast.com. Finally.